Throughout American history, there have been some very influential immigrants who have come to America and changed our history. One of these immigrants is named Marie Joseph Paul Yves Rock Gilbert du Motier de Lafayette, better known as Marquis de Lafayette. He came to America as a 19 year old Frenchman whose sole purpose was to fight for liberty and freedom for America. That's what he believed in, and he thought that our beliefs were correct, so he came and fought. Lafayette once even said, My heart was enlisted, and I thought of only joining my colors to those of the revolutionaries. Stockwell, referring to his upright zeal for fighting for what he believes in. During the revolution, Lafayette played a key role in some of the battles and key victories that caused us to gain our freedom from Great Britain. As a young boy, he was very well off and didn't need to make a name for himself. His childhood was very abnormal, though. His father died when he was two, and his mother died when he was 13. This led to inheritance of his family money and estates. And Lafayette soon became one of the most wealthy men in France. France, Thomas. By the time he was 16, he was the second lieutenant of a French regiment and was married to Adrien de Noelis, a then 14-year-old girl. He had his life set out in front of him. He had a name, money, a wife, and troops, but he still wanted more. He still wanted to fight for what was right. That's why he came to America. There was no need for him to fight in the war, other than the fact that he believed in what the colonists believed in. When Lafayette was 19, he came across to fight in the revolution. He met with the Continental Congress to discuss his involvement in the war, and they appointed him a volunteer major general in the army, Leibson. He didn't even need payment. He just wanted to fight. He offered his work as volunteer work and they accepted. He was placed under the command of General George Washington and was immediately thrown into battle, Stockwell. He was shot in the leg in the Battle of Brandywine Creek and was taken care of by Washington's surgeon, Stockwell. Washington even told his surgeon to, quote, treat him, Lafayette, as if he were my own son, Stockwell. Some historians think that Washington saw the son he never had in Lafayette, and Lafayette saw in him a father figure since his father had died when he was so young. Soon after his musket wound healed, he found himself at the command of a division whose mission was Valley Forge, BD. Washington was impressed with his work, so he pushed for this to happen. At this point, Washington not only was impressed with Lafayette's work and courage, but also had an extreme trust in him. Lafayette wrote to his wife from Valley Forge that... Quote, Washington's trust in me is deeper than I dare say. Leaps in. Lafayette also tells, in, tells his wife, quote, In the place he occupies, he is surrounded by flatterers and secret enemies. He finds in me a trustworthy friend in whom he can confide and who will always tell him the truth. Not a day goes by without him talking to me at length or writing me long letters. And he is willing to consult me on the most interesting points. Leaps in. This really helps show how devoted Lafayette was and how much trust Washington had put in him. After fighting in one more battle, the Battle of Monmouth, Lafayette returned home to France to settle tensions between the French and the Americans, Thomas. He also tried to convince France's, France to send a naval fleet and to help the colonists in the war. He succeeded in both missions, Thomas. France sent a fleet and more trip, troops to help in the revolution. When Lafayette completed this feat, Washington reported to Congress saying, quote, During the time he has been in France, he has uniformly manifested the same zeal in our affairs, which animated his conduct while he was among us, and has been, upon all occasions, an essential friend to America. Leaps in. This again shows Washington's trust in Lafayette. Soon Lafayette would come back to the colonies and face the toughest and most important, arguably, battle in American history. I say arguably, because the battle I'm referring to is the Battle of Yorktown, the battle where General Cornwallis and the British surrendered, and where we gained our independence, gains. Lafayette played a key role in this battle. He and his division co cornered General Cornwallis's troops, but waited to attack until Washington's and Rochambeau's forces arrived, gains. Lafayette could have just attacked and gotten all of the gr glory for winning the battle, because he had enough men to do it. But he knew that there was more than just glory on the line. There was freedom on the line for the Americans. The colonists needed their freedom, and if he could have he could have went in and won it, but he wanted to make sure that they won, so he waited for Washington. Lafayette didn't come to seek glory. He came to help the colonists win the American Revolutionary War, and that's exactly what he did. If it were not for Marquis de Lafayette, we may not be here today. Any of us. We could all be sitting around obeying a king's orders. 
Lafayette gave up his own personal glory so that one day we would be a free people. Mar Marquis de Lafayette was one of the most influential immigrants in the history of America. He did not have to come over and fight. He only did because he wanted to fight for what was right and what he would believed in. He gained the trust of one of our most beloved historical figures, our founding father, George Washington, which gained him the command of a division. He then fought in major battles, which would go on to make our independence from Great Britain possible. Thanks to Marquis de Lafayette and a few others like George Washington and Alexander Hamilton, we are now a free people. Thanks.